Hello guys, it's Sunil DJ here and in this video I'm just gonna give an overview for NVIDIA JSON Xavier and Next Developer Kit module. So this is the board here which actually we receive and this is the main part of our video itself. And inside the box we will be getting a barrel, barrel power supply which is a 45 watt rated one. Runs over like 19 volts at 2.37 ampere which is really great because this is a 45 watt that means we can also power the SOEM as well as all the peripheral jacks in a full range comparatively like the previous boards released by NVIDIA like the Jetson Nano those boards require an external power supply you have to get it and it's really difficult to manage power supply in them but this thing includes everything and this is a very premium board as well this is not as cheap as what you actually think this is pretty much expensive like six to seven times pricier than the Jetson Nano 2, 2GB model at the same time like around four times expensive than the Jetson Nano 4GB full range model and then most of the use case for this board is like in an industrial level purpose only because anything like a student or a people who really wants to make a project with vision applications and those things Jetson Nano is more than enough but this board actually has lots of uh, features and powerhouse inside this you can just see how the SOC size you can see right wait I'll just focus it for you my god it's not focusing okay it's fine you just have a look this green color with some kind of brownish chip this is the SOC of this whole board and see how large it is it's really huge it's the exact size of my RTX 2060 Super I wish because when I actually take a look inside, I got a chip that's in the exact, exact size package as this one. So it's extremely powerful compared to the previous Jetson Nano 2GB and even 4GB models. So let's start with the IO section. So we got, wait a minute, yeah. We got a barrel jack and the most advanced, actually this is the most top of the line design by NVIDIA. This carrier board you can see, right? Just exclude this SOEM because this is just a DDR4 socket holding up this SOEM system on a module yeah and just exclude this NVIDIA's top of the line design for an carrier board is this one only because this is the most expensive one with this carrier board the previous Jetson Nano actually has a little bit inferior version and the 2GB has the most inferior and the worst design for a carrier board I wish but this has the best ever by NVIDIA and we got a barrel jack which actually can take from 9 volts right over to 19 volts and the barrel which actually works with 19 volts as well you can just plug in something like a 19, 9 volts 5 amps kind of a power supply to it to power the whole board and has a proper VRM section for it to regulate everything clearly and we got some video outputs here and this is the display port 1.4 which can support up to 4k at 144 hertz which is really nice and here we got is a HDMI 2.0 port which actually can support up to 4K 60Hz so you can have two 4K monitors hooked up in and it works fine and got a set of four USB ports actually these are USB 3.1 you can just have a look inside because this actually colored in black but these are USB 3.1 ports and here we got is a gigabit ethernet port controlled by a real tech controller that is embedded directly inside this SOM I wish yes and here we got as a serial interface micro USB port I could yeah I could just focus it really yeah this micro USB port is specially used for serial interfacing with your PC or any other SOS or I mean an SBC or something like that to actually communicate each other through serial communication and right here we got a set of GPIO pins this is a 40 pin GPIO configuration exactly same as what Raspberry Pi has but it will not support some of the shields or hats designed especially for Raspberry Pis because this controllers are extreme uh, it's something like it's entirely different from Raspberry Pi's design so this will work with the Jetsons one protocol so it may not be able to work on with some hats that specially designed for Raspberry Pi. I had to get a special hat that's designed for Jetson Nano to function with this. So at the side we got two CSI connectors for your cameras. You can just multiply the CSI connectors depending on your needs. This can hold two 4K 30 frames per second cameras or you can just split them up into multiple lanes and you can just you know, integrate something like 
14 1080p cameras as well so it's depending on your usage so let's get to into the back side of the board and we got a lot of stuff so here we go to the full size the NVMe slot here it's an M.2 slot for NVMe and you can just uh, yeah, it doesn't support any kind of SATA drives here so have to go for an NVMe drive you can just go with the gen 3 version itself because it supports gen 3 PCIe H4 only and here we got is a Wi-Fi Bluetooth module which also runs over PCIe and this is from Realtek for your reference and we got two antennas and all the chair antennas are coated by this plastic chassis this is an actually injection mold chassis how specially designed an STL file for this one this actually fits inside fits with uh, this module as well and also the Jetson Nano 4GB and 2GB as well so this doesn't hold up those antennas but this is really compact and ergonomic compared to what they actually did within from Nvidia side then let's just deep dive inside what's inside the SOC and what's the features I mean the SOM and what's the features of this so this has six cores of ARM v8.2 Carmel specially engraved by Nvidia and these are the CPU specifications which I am saying now and has 8 gigabits of DDR4 128-bit RAM memory solution for this and in GPU side this actually has something like a 384 CUDA core with 5 SMUs I wish uh, just really more than enough for a lot of applications that is in industrial class if you really need a lot of horsepower that is a big daddy for this board which is the AGX Xavier from Nvidia which is cost double the time of this board like it costs more than thousand dollars whereas this board cost under five hundred dollars which is again pretty more expensive but for my application this should meet for sure and other than that you got dedicated NVNC encoders you got dedicated NVDLA encoders as well as the Jetson Nano doesn't have anything just do all the stuff using those 128 core CUDA that's why the performance of Jetson Nano isn't that great for my application I just went upgraded myself with something that costs like six to five times more but anyhow I think this will fulfill every expectations which I have now and this is the SOEM so here we got some pins for interfacing with the power button and UART communication section and we also got something really special which I actually need for my project that's this CAN bus connectors I just want to solder headers here so that I can interface with CAN bus which can be integrated onto your automobile or your drone with a proper high-end controller like a drone commander or something like that it got CAN bus connectors dedicated so that's really great and don't mind this tiny LED I just did this in a custom format because I just want to know whether my board is running or not because here we got is a tiny LED indicator which is not much pretty much enough for me to verify whether it's an on state or sleep state but this LED is really huge this is an SMD LED I'll just show you yeah so don't mind this this will not come out of the box so let's just jump inside the software section so that I can give you the clear overview on that and after that let's talk about the cons of this board yes this board has a little bit of cons and most people are thinking that this board is much fit for replacing their laptops and desktops that's not gonna happen for sure so I will explain that after the software overview so this is the graphical interface it is provided with the jetpack version for the Nvidia Jetson Xavier NX you can just take a look this is just the generic genome launcher skin so most probably when you actually install Ubuntu desktop on your x86 systems or your laptop desktop something like that you'll be getting a similar uh, user interface and this actually has the exact stuff but comparatively we got something like an LXD interface as well for the jet it's a nano 2gb version because it actually has only two gigabits of ram so it's really limited towards memory that's why an lxd solution there you can also install lxde here so that you can actually decrease the ram usage by like around 1gb from the total ram usage 
and just have a look at the software you can see you're getting some updates as well here and I'm just going to give remind me later here and so this is the app drawer you can see all applications listed here it's really nice You've got a lot of uh, apps and stuff and very specific uh, Libre, uh, LibreOffice works on this so comparing the documentation applications LibreOffice works fine with this ARM based board and Arduino IDE works partially not compared compared to an x86 system with a Windows or Mac running this runs a little bit partially it doesn't support most of the boards that are recently launched by Arduino so I have to take a look as well got some stuff like documents, music and stuff let's open the file explorer and see something yeah this is a file explorer you can see all the stuff are displayed or desktop documents and stuff like that let's head on to the app store that is embedded onto the Ubuntu and see got a lot of applications but most of the applications present here will not work it's not certain that it should work because it's displaying all these apps if you, you can just install it but after the installation it will give you error that this is not optimized for this specific board or the hardware is not required it's not in the required amount or it doesn't support at all most of the apps around like 85 percentage of the applications will not run on Jets and Xavier and it's because it's an ARM based board and most of the applications are designed specifically for to run with its 86 applications so it's really a bit of a difficulty version even Spotify doesn't work <laughs> I tried it but it doesn't work so lots of the applications you can just scroll on into it and I can just uh, search for something that supports with it and uh, like got something called LibriCAD LibriCAD will not work you can't render stuff in it you just design make your design but you can't render anything because of the hardware not supported issues so those things most of the applications you see is not supported out of the box even Blender will work on it I don't know why but there are certain ways that you can make Blender work on it but out of the box by installing through the app store it will not get it working so I have to do a lot of stuff so going back into settings I mean you can see what are the things available see appearance brightness logs lots of stuff available for tuning up like appearance you can see you can just have your own wallpapers and brightness most probably you are using a monitor like this you are not going to have brightness controls over here so that's not an issue desktop sharing means it's network I think it crashed because there is no proper setup for network yet and language support I think you will be getting a very large list of language sets but I really don't want to mess with that remind me later it actually wants to download a lot of language selections and online account security and privacy I think what are the options we are going to get it's like very simple it's not like Windows having a very complex security solutions because it's already Linux right a text entry oh it's keyboard settings I think and this is the Bluetooth settings where you can pair up because as I said we've got uh, integrated Bluetooth 5.1 5.0 actually so you can just make use of it by connecting to a Bluetooth speaker I think Bluetooth speaker works fine it's not in the list of cons it works fine and uh, color settings I can take it select sRGB profile or something like that I won't work because my monitor here doesn't support anything like HDR or something like sRGB specific settings like that so in displays you can see my monitor is being detected and the resolution is set at 1080p resolution and stuff so it works fine as well you can see a lot of settings that is much more applicable with windows and mac keyboard shortcuts and typing speeds and everything Re registering your keys and everything works mouse as well the same you can just increase the sensitivity here oh it's pointer speed okay you can just increase everything and manage them and here we got the network settings yeah i have connected to my studio net through wi-fi and power settings i think yeah i just want to tell you something here so you can see right i just zoom for it for reference yeah i can see that right some nvidia logo with uh, yeah this one so this is the mode 15 watt at 6 cores you can just uh, select your own stuff if you really want to work on the maximum at maximum performance you can just select this mode 15 watts running at 6 cores 
at six cores, uh, the frequency range will be something around from 1.2 to 1.5 range. For four cores, the exact thing, and two cores at 15 watts. Ah, yeah, at two cores, you will be getting the maximum burst frequency of two gigahertz. So even up to like 1.9 to 2 gigahertz, you can just boost your clocks by entering to two core. But four core is exactly the same as six core, I wish. But this 10 watts power efficient mode will underclock at the same time will run up like two or four cores only because they had to reduce five watts, right, to run in, in like an eco functionality or something like any power limitation is there in your project in the sense you can select these three depending on your need. And we've got RAM Tegra stats where you will be having a terminal popping up and showing all those CPU and GPU frequencies, current state, everything on live. That's it. Again, settings and query. So for power settings, you can just have a look at here. Power mode is here. You can't access power mode from this settings. Printer sound. Yes. Through this, you can just modify it. It also supports 7.1 audio because my receiver is a 7.2 channel receiver and I actually plugged in it, I got uh, all 7 channels laid over here the settings was really nice because I know Ubuntu has a very good audio settings as well because like 4 years back I used to use Ubuntu on my x86 all-in-one PC and it works fine but this board has some issues, I'll just tell you later and here code system details and stuff everything like it runs on ubuntu 18.4 lts and got 7.6 gb of uh, memory you can see right got 7.6 gigabits of memory on va processor nvidia tegra xavier and vgpu integrated 64-bit operating system and 128 gb of ssds sorry s uh, it's an sd card not an ssd All the same and that's it so here we got something called trash right I'll just zoom out for your reference so here to so the files I the present files or that I deleted after installation just can clear it's so just like on Windows uh, trash and, and even Mac you got something called trash right it's the same Ubuntu also has the same code those and this is the file you have to head when actually you get a board from NVIDIA like Jetson Nano, Jetson Nano 4GB and even the Xavier Nights. The L40 Redmi. The L40 stands for Linux for Tegra. And here there are certain instructions that are being given for you to follow up to make, make use of them like VNC, Wi-Fi, USB, like the serial interface as I said, right? If you want to start up with the serial interface, just read this to notepads and that's it the version has been listed here i think yeah i take release and you will be having the features that like it's released the 5.1 version and it's date february 19 2021 actually this is the 2021 version only the date is specified here so this is an up-to-date operating system which i have installed on my jitsun xavier nx and that's all with the software overview so that's it guys, it's time for the pros and cons of this board. And as I said, I have already stated all the pros, like you get dual display ports, so you can just power up your dual displays, dual 4K displays as well to work multitask and everything, because this has 8 gigabits of RAM, so you can just multitask with it. You know, to neglect, because lots of memory available for to work with. And got four USB 3.1 jacks so that you can just power up all your peripherals. At the same time, you can also work with your hard disks, like external 2.5 inch hard disk, SSDs and stuff. Still, you are getting a lot of power because we got a 45 watt power brick to power all this stuff. That's really a big advantage. But for the price, it's needed one. It's like an essential stuff. But anyhow, they have included. That's again a pro. Other stuff is the inclusion of a canvas connector, which is again very needed for my application. So CAN stands for Controller Area Network. It's pretty much used in automotives, like your cars, vehicles, that actually has a built-in computer to evaluate those speeds and stuff. And drones usually has the CAN. Most of the industrial applications also has this CAN bus, 
because you will have a separate microcontroller and a microprocessor and a main server to actually interact with all the equipment. So during that time, Canvas will surely help you in handling and arranging stuff through digital factors. And that's the other thing that pro comes under pros. Now coming up with the cons, yes, this board, this beast, super expensive board still actually has some cons which are irrelevant for what we are going to talk and what we're going to really do with this board. This has the poorest audio output I have ever ever listened to it. A computer a, through a laptop or even through something like a gaming console like an Xbox One or something like that. Because those devices are specifically designed to work on with multimedia stuff, play video, audio stuff, everything. But this board actually has some circuit that actually an ESD circuit, actually ESD diode based, array diode based circuits backside of this connector and those actually create interference with the audio signals. So it gets less some sort of clipping audio, clipping stuff in high frequency range. And when actually bass hits the highs clips, I don't know why because my system is like a mid-range level home theater, AV receiver and everything here and also some reference towers, a set of subwoofers and everything and it sounds crap. The reason is this has some circuit that is not that prominent for audio solution. So don't get this board for multimedia purpose, okay, because this is unfit. Just can play videos at 4K resolution at 60, 60 frames per second for sure no stutters or anything because this has dedicated NVNC encoders and it can encode H.265 as well as 264 but for audio solution playing high resolution files and everything this is a piece of shit consideration for those so just use your laptops or your desktop with a graphics card like this or even graphics card is not prominent for those applications just use your internal HDMI port that's available with your Intel or AMD APUs and this board is unfit for that. So you can just get an NVIDIA shield for half of this price and you can rock everything because most of the high-end home theater users actually use NVIDIA shield. So you can just go with a shield instead of this board. This is a beast in terms of edge computing and AI and DL workloads for a very tiny form factor and very low power consumption as well, just 15 watts consumed by this SOM, which is really nice. But not for a multimedia purpose. Just go with the NVIDIA Shield. Now coming up to the point, can this tiny beast can replace your desktop PC or your laptops? Not at all. As I said in the software section, software overview, this board will not support most of the prominent apps that we are using. For example, documentation, or CAD based applications, and much more IDEs will not work on this board because those are specifically designed for its 80s its environment where this board actually runs on an ARM chip so in risk operating risk uh, actually technology so I couldn't <laughs> express that a reduced instruction set computing whereas our computers like this one like see the background is my beast I just built a year ago and this is an its 86 system right so this can handle all the applications that are specifically designed for it. But this board cannot handle those because it is an ARM based board. It works on RISC, whereas my computer works on complex instruction set computing. It's CISC and this is RISC, reduced option. So we need applications that are specially tuned for that so that you can run through this board. Despite having lots of horsepower towards GPU and CPU, still this board requires a lot of support from NVIDIA as well because the so uh, software support is very much limited to the jetpack that is created by NVIDIA only. The custom side loads as well as the uh, custom operating system designed by most developers aren't properly support any kind of boards like NVIDIA Jetson J uh, Nano as well as the Xavier NX because it has lots of bugs and incompatibility issues. So Jetpack is the best operating system right now for Xavier NX, Nano and Nano 2GB and even the AGX version as well. But Jetpack also has a lot of limitations so it can work with almost every Tura based applications and everything related to DL and AI workload. But other than that, working on something related to more video encoding as well as working on stuff related to audio as I already specified is not at all recommended with this beast. And that's the pros and cons. 
and beyond that i just want to talk about the pricing as well i got this board for something around like 37000 in india inr okay in dollars you can get it for something like 399 to 4 449 i wish depending on the region you live and for the price it seems worth for people who actually going to use everything it provides for sure and just to compare with this the background i got a graphics card in my pc right this actually uh, rtx 2060 super from msi which also <laughs> the exact same price point i got this for 38000 and this is for 37000 so just conclude yourself this is a beast for di and a workload dl and a workloads whereas the back one can also work as a deep learning for learning purpose for learning and sketching purpose i can use my graphics card because it's way more powerful than this board and for edge computing and on spot or proof of concept those things i can just implement using this 15 watt computer it's like a beast so that's it guys thanks for watching subscribe for more videos like this i'm gonna upload a lot of videos related to edge computing and projects and stuff as well and i just want to conclude this video right now so goodbye, see you on the next video.